Well, it's nice and hot, and the greenhouse is just perfect for tomatoes. And the cucumbers are pretty much done. Uh, now we have plenty of pickles in the basement. So now we are all about putting up tomatoes. And we're doing them every way we can. Uh, and that's all I'm going to talk about this week on uh, Food Mageddon is how we're saving our tomatoes. probably know um, I'm using my neighbor's greenhouse to grow some of our food and in here I have about 75 tomato plants of all kinds of different varieties I've got uh, beefsteak type uh, brandy wine uh, I've got paste tomatoes I have cherry tomatoes um, these are all like I said uh, a week before uh, volunteers from my garden compost uh, that I use for starting other plants these tomatoes pop out and so I just transplanted them um, I'm not going to save any seeds from here because they're all mixed together so they won't breed true. But this is a good, uh, this is almost a tomato powerhouse for us to get this much garden space, um, or this much greenhouse space in which to grow. In other videos, I've showed you how I trellis and uh, prune the suckers off of these guys. Um, so I'm not going to go into the care and maintenance of the plants. In another video, I also talked about how I'm fertilizing them, namely with urine and uh, ash and I linked to a Finnish study that showed that urine and ash can act just like regular fertilizer you buy at the store but it's free things that you have around the house which is really important now as fossil fuels become less available we need to figure out ways to fertilize our crops without the use of bought-in nitrogen that's going to be a huge sticking point point. Um, and so this week primarily we're just going to talk about the tomato harvest and how we process them and save them so that we can enjoy this summer goodness all winter. I'm continuing to use rainwater to irrigate my tomatoes and five gallons will just about do all the tomato plants in this whole row. They've adapted nicely. I know that their roots are reaching these pools of water because uh, it's pretty hot in here in the middle of the day right now and I don't have much in the way of, of drooping or wilting. And so every day right now I'm coming out here and making sure to water. If I don't water, then the tomato, uh, the tomato fruits will split. So if you're seeing split uh, tomatoes, that's probably a, a lack of water or in, in, in insufficient water. And you know, I, as I go along and, and collect, I'm also cutting out these, uh, these suckers just as I see them when they're little, I try and get them. It makes it a lot quicker and easier. I have my paste tomatoes and these guys are heirlooms or San Marzano twos meaning that if I plant the seeds from these they'll grow up again just like this I could get a greater yield out of a hybrid like a celebrity but I can't replant that seed and expect to get consistent results so that's why I am growing the heirloom seeds um, or at least open open pollinated types uh, to get a consistent product year after year uh, even when I can't order in seeds from outside because fossil fuels aren't available for shipping. And then right behind the house, uh, we have these German Johnson tomatoes. This is another, uh, it's a brandy wine derivative. Um, and again, this is also a heirloom, uh, one that I can plant and be sure that I'll get it to breed true uh, next year instead of having to buy uh, fresh seed. And boy, is it prolific. But it also grows these insanely large tomatoes. Oop, this one looks like something was already enjoying this one, but th look at the size of these things. It's crazy. So I get some nice big tomatoes from these ones. So every day I'm getting about a basket full of tomatoes, uh, which uh, has to be processed fairly quickly because they will go ripe and get full of fruit flies, fruit flies pretty quickly here in our, in our kitchen. So for the paste tomatoes, I freeze them 
uh, in a dish like this, then that gives me solid blocks like this. This is about 25 paste tomatoes, and that lets me gather about 100 paste tomatoes before I do a whole batch of, of tomato paste. So I used to just pop these paste tomatoes right into the fridge, and then when I got 100 of them I'd make my, my tomato paste, but uh, my better half complained whenever uh, she would open the freezer that a whole pile of tomatoes would fall out on her because, you know, they're round, they shift around. So this year, I've been packing them into these square containers, and this has been great. Um, it's a lot more uh, space conscious in the freezer. It's important to keep the people you're living with happy with all your crazy projects. I'm generally not a big fan of freezing, but in this case, I don't have, I don't get a hundred paste tomatoes in the time it would take them not to go bad. So what I generally just do is pop them open, make sure there's nothing funny inside, after I've rinsed them off of course. I cut out anything that looks brown or black or sometimes there's a little bit of something inside these, I don't know what it is, just a little bit of black schmutz. Um, and as I go, never mind the noise in the background, that's just our local raccoon, toddler raccoon, pulling all the canning supplies out. See there, I have that little bit of black, I don't know what it is, so I'm cutting it out. And I'll feed it to the chickens. So now just as I fill this guy up, so I press it down nice and hard until the juices, some of the juices are released. These are pretty dry tomatoes because they're paste tomatoes and it's been pretty dry here. And then I just go on filling it up until we hit the top, pop it in the freezer, and then tomorrow, or even later tonight, I'll probably be able to take it out of the form. And by the end of the day tomorrow, I will probably have 100 tomatoes, 100 paste tomatoes, which is about my my general measurement. I don't want to ever make more than, than a set number of uh, half pints at a time because my canner only holds so many. You are a loud little boy. So here I've got one. I have my other and I'll pop this in. This will freeze tomorrow. I'll pop it out of the form and by then I should have enough to do a whole round of, of tomato paste. Tomatoes. Today is tomato paste day so I have all four of those uh, containers. Each one is two quarts of uh, crushed down and consolidated tomatoes weighing between uh, about four or five pounds. So I've probably got about 20 pounds of, of Roma type tomatoes here uh, cooking down uh, and melting <laughs> uh, from their frozen state to get them uh, liquefied. Um, then I'll cook them, run them through a sieve, um, and then cook them down some more. Uh, probably in the oven. I'm going to try it a different way this year before canning them. So uh, that's what I'm up to today. More tomato mania. And now we just continue to run everything through the food mill. After it's cooked and softened up, sure, and this just removes the skins and otherwise homogenizes the uh, tomato paste, or what will be tomato paste. Saves me from having to blanch and remove all the skins from all these tomatoes, which would have been a huge chore. Definitely a worthwhile piece of equipment. I use it to make applesauce and other things, but it's, uh, it was a game changer when we got this. The chickens then get to eat the leftovers. They like that. And now it's the next day, and I have reduced down and hot water bath canned. Uh, it was about about nine quarts of tomatoes, and I've reduced it down to 13 half pints. So uh, less less than a third of its original volume. And now I've got tomato paste. Um, each one of these will make enough pizza sauce for three or four weeks. 
or spaghetti sauce for a couple of nights just because it's a lot of concentrated tomato flavor. Um, I will make another batch of this and I will also dehydrate a lot of the paste tomatoes also once once I do probably I'll probably do one more batch of this tomato paste. And now with my larger tomatoes, I am going to make tomato sauce, but we're also making crushed tomatoes. It's basically the same process. You put the tomatoes in boiling water for just a minute until the skins start to come off. And then out into the ice bath to cool. You can see how the skin comes right off. This is not a how-to video, so check out other resources for that. This is just kind of showing you what we're up to. Then I use a paring knife to just cut the cut the core out. Pull the skin off. This of course goes out to the chickens who are big fans of tomato skins. And then Lightly chop them in the pot. And I do, oh, I don't know, two rounds like that. It's about three pounds, five pounds, I don't know, in the pot. And then the pot goes on the stove. And I mash those down just to get it started. Once you have the first ones liquefied, then you can add more tomatoes in. The rest of them will liquefy. And essentially what you want to do is have a big boiling pot of tomato bits. Now it'd be quicker if I was for for crushed tomatoes I just get them cooking for five ten minutes just so they're soft and then I can them. Uh, but for tomato sauce you want to cook them until the cell walls have completely disintegrated and broken down so it's actually tomato sauce. This is not spaghetti sauce which has um, spices and other things in it. This is just straight up tomato sauce, so it's good to, you could make pasta sauce out of it, you can make pizza sauce out of it, you can add it to soups. It is an all-purpose uh, delicious tomato intensifier, and I want to cook it down a bit so that it's a bit more concentrated. I don't want to be storing a whole bunch of liquid, I want to be storing tomatoey goodness. So if these were crushed tomatoes, they'd be ready to go. Just have to strain them, pop them in the jars, and then uh, and then hot water bath can. But since we're making tomato sauce, we gotta let it reduce quite a bit. What are you making, Lauren? Salsa. Yay! One more thing to use up all these dang tomatoes. How many pounds of potatoes are you? Potatoes. This is only 10. Only 10 pounds of tomatoes. Ah, we need more. Are you helping? Are you helping? This is just one type of salsa we make. We also wait until it's about to freeze and then we go collect all the green tomatoes usually we get about a five gallon bucket or two full of tomatoes and then we make green tomato salsa and that's one of our other mainstays so here we've got eight uh, salsas we want about 24. what are you making lauren i'm making tomato jam it's delicious on everything and spicy if you want to make it spicy we choose to make it spicy so I'm filling up my solar dehydrator, essentially a box through which hot air will pass and it will take all the moisture out of these tomatoes and we'll have nice sun-dried tomatoes, hopefully. 
I could use my electric dehydrator, but tomatoes take forever, especially these non-paste tomatoes. And running a dehydrator at 1500 watts will just take up all of our power for the day. So I have this solar dehydrator. So what's happening is the black mesh in there heats up and pushes air upwards uh, as it heats, right, through convection. So it pulls colder air in underneath, heats it up, and then it gets to the top and runs all the way up into this box. And then um, it runs through all these racks. And these are just sliced beefsteak style tomatoes with a tiny bit of salt. Help get the juices flowing. And my target temperature is about 135 to 140 degrees. Today I'm here not just to harvest tomatoes, but to pick a few tomatoes to keep for seeds. So I'm going to look at my plants. This one may have some sort of blight going on, so even though it's producing really nicely, I'm going to avoid it and pick some of the, the nicer plants here to save the seeds from uh, for next year. And now I just take my seed potatoes, seed potatoes, nope, uh, seed tomatoes, and make sure they're free of dirt and take a wide mouth jar. A couple different ways to do it. You can slice them open, scoop it out. You can also, in theory, and I'm not as good at this as I'd like, um, slice the lobes open and then milk the seeds right out but I always worry that I don't get enough I don't get it all nice and ripe tomato though what you're looking to get out the seeds and the goo that surrounds them I think it's called germoplasm or something and what's going to happen is over the next five to seven days this is going to ferment and twice a day I'm going to shake them just to kind of uh, make sure everything gets mixed in and what I'm looking to do is uh, mix up and uh, break down the goo that surrounds the seeds because that uh, is a somewhat of a, a germination inhibitor so I want to get the seeds out from their protective gel coating and I do this for each variety of tomatoes separately into their own jar obviously each of these t tomatoes are also planted as far away from one another as I can so that they don't crossbreed. Okay, so basically uh, twice a day I'm going to shake these things just to bust up the the seeds from the seed germ around them. Um, after about five to seven days I'm going to add water um, and give them a couple shakes, let them sit a little longer. All the viable seeds sink to the bottom, all the um, when viable seeds stay on top, I skim the sludge off the top, I rinse them and wash them a few more times, and then I rinse them with a 10% bleach solution, and that will kill late blight spores that may or may not be on here since it's the end of the season and I'm saving them, there may be late blight on them. Um, all of these instructions you can find at the Permaculture Research Institute. It's the best short guide I've seen to saving tomato seeds. There's a lot of them out there, so just uh, avail yourself to them. I will link to uh, PRI, the Permaculture Research Institute, right here or right there. I don't know where it shows up. Anyway, um, yeah, and then uh, I'll dry them and save them for next year. Well, we haven't quite filled up this half of the, uh, of the food storage yet, but we're getting there. We got our pickles and our maple syrup, honey, and this is all tomato products. Um, this will probably get overfull. We'll have to, this is the overflow up top. Uh, for extra pickles and extra tomatoes. Um, well, we've got our crushed tomatoes, our tomato sauce, our tomato jam, our tomato paste, uh, salsa, and marinara sauce. Um, and it's still coming, so we still have a lot more work to do uh, to fill up the rest of this uh, storage area. And then this all will get under construction and will be insulated and closed up, more shelves put in, fill the refrigerator. We still have a lot of work to do uh, down here. Well, that's it for this week of uh, Food Mageddon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this week we spent pretty much all of our time talking about tomatoes. Next week I think it'll be more of a regular episode. We'll just kind of run around uh, the, the farm here, the homestead. Okay, and show what we've been up to uh, more generally. Um, 
the week after that or coming up soon we'll have a whole episode devoted to apples uh, which will be which will be fun apples are my favorite fruit and luckily we just were given access to an abandoned orchard with a hundred trees uh, so we're gonna have to help rehab those over the next year um, luckily there's uh, Luckily, there's a crop this year already for us to use, so that's great. Um, I'll be building an apple cider press and a shredder um, for making apple cider and hard apple cider, as well as uh, applesauce, dehydrated apples, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. So, um, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. You can check out our blog, lowtechinstitute.org, where we have all kinds of information about not only Food Megan, but uh, the Low Technology Institute, which is our parent organization, and some of the research we're doing, like uh, bee research and other things. So, uh, check us out there. You can reach me. I'm Scott at Low Tech. I'm Scott at lowtechinstitute.org. Uh, you can also find us on the, the main social media sites, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so yeah, be in touch. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, take care. That's what I'm up to today. More tomato mania. Oh, no, you don't get the hammer. That's not for you. Tornado, what are you doing? Making a mess. Go. Woo! <laughs> Close. Nice and ripe tomato, though. Mmm, that's a good tomato. Mmm. Hey, Phil. Start to be yourself again. Camera.